Hi and welcome to Prepping Essentials. Quick and reliable communication forms a vital part of everyday life. With our access to 24-hour news media and the explosion in the capability of our mobile telephone handsets and network, it's something that we take for granted. Everyone now has the capability to reach out and communicate with anyone around the world 24 hours a day, no matter where they might be. Whether that is checking in with loved ones, discussing what's going on in our life, alerting people to potential dangers, or just ordering a takeaway meal, we've become ever more dependent on seamless communication, just to cope with the challenges of modern day life. But what if our normal life stopped and a crisis suddenly occurred? Pretty much any crisis situation requires prompt and effective action if we're to overcome them. Coordination between individuals, with members of a group, or indeed between different groups of people will therefore become vital. But in a crisis situation, many of the normal methods of communication will most likely be disrupted or even fail completely. So how then can we communicate effectively in a crisis? Let's find out. It might be a little bit hard to imagine for some people, but radio was once the king of communication. Radio used to be the most reliable way of getting up-to-date news into our homes before the advent of TV. Indeed, in many homes, it was also a focal point for all of the family entertainment. Before the advent of mobile phones, it was also the most effective way for people to communicate when they worked in larger workplaces or went out in the field. And it was, of course, the mainstay for military and government communication. Radio has not completely disappeared from general use. Many people still listen to radio programmes in the home or in the car, and you'll still see two-way radios being used in the workplace by people such as security guards or construction workers. So while it has been to a larger extent overtaken by TV or the mobile phone, radio still performs a very useful role in everyday life. While it might be easy to overlook radio as a key form of communication for everyday use, it is one which will again become king in times of crisis, and it should be something that everyone who is prepping should consider as part of their essential equipment. So why would I need one of the more traditional radio receivers? Well, as I said earlier, most of our news now comes via television or the internet. During a crisis, both television and the internet are likely to be severely disrupted or even lost completely. During any crisis, being kept informed about what's happening both in the local community and in the wider world will play a crucial role in influencing what actions we might need to take in order to make it through the crisis. Radios don't need a mains power connection. They don't need to be hardwired into the grid. This means they can continue to function during a crisis and since they're very portable, we can take them with us, whatever we're doing and wherever we're going. Bearing in mind what I said earlier about mobile telephones and the internet, when there's a crisis, then two-way radio communication will also become an essential. Over recent years, two-way radios have started to become fashionable again as a common means of communicating for people participating in outdoor leisure activities such as hiking or attending music festivals and sporting events. They're used for primarily the same reasons that you would need to use them in a time of crisis. And there's a few reasons for this. Radios are very portable. Just like mobile telephones, your radio is compact and it can be kept in your pocket, your bag or clipped to your belt ready for immediate use. And just like a mobile telephone, with many models, you can also have a hands-free kit. They're cheap to buy and to run. Handheld radios can be bought for as little as £10 each and they have no other running costs other than the occasional charging of the battery. 
You can keep in touch with others over long distances. Even cheap handheld radios have a range of over a mile and in areas of open ground or when operated from a high ground, this range will extend to several miles. Vehicle mounted units can also communicate over larger distances and base station or ham radios can communicate around the world. Radios will work when other forms of communication doesn't or they're not there. In more rural or remote areas, mobile telephone networks often have limited or no network coverage. And nowadays, a large majority of people simply don't have landline telephones anymore. During an emergency or a crisis situation, the normal communication system will quickly become overloaded as people try to contact each other. In such circumstances, the crisis if end itself might damage or destroy key communication infrastructure. Or indeed, in some cases, the authorities themselves might just switch it off. Radio waves don't need a communications infrastructure to support them. They travel through the air all by themselves, so they can provide an independent source of reliable communication wherever and whenever you need it. Finally, radios enable coordination and information sharing in times of crisis. In an emergency, the last thing you want to do is to waste time guessing where your team is located or what they're doing. You want to be able to coordinate effectively and you also want to know that they're safe or that they have the means to ask for assistance if needed. Having an effective means of communication will be vital in such circumstances and radios can provide just that. So we've covered a lot of ground already in this video and you might well be thinking, oh my God, this is confusing, it's very complicated, there's just too many different radios. So it's time to slow down and to try and make things very simple for you. So I suggest that we look at the most basic requirements, a radio so that you can pick up news bulletins or emergency broadcasts and the simplest of handheld radios so that you can communicate easily with individuals in your group or in other groups in the local area. So with that in mind, you might remember a video that I uploaded a few days ago now on the subject of emergency power when something hits the fan. Uh, essentially, it was a review of a portable electric generator that I have and which I keep in the camper van. So every couple of weeks or so, I do uh, maintenance on various prepping items, one of which was the portable generator. And in that video, I did show you some communication gear that I also keep in the van and that I was gonna do some routine maintenance on. I have a, a selection of communication gear, um, whether that's radios in the house, for receiving news bulletins, radios in the vehicles that I have, and I have a, a selection of short range and fairly basic handheld two-way radios. And it's those that I wanted to show you today. So let's take a look at uh, some of the gear that I was maintaining and see if it would be suitable for you to use. Uh, inside this plastic box, which is to protect it from moisture, I've got a anti-static grip seal bag. Um, two reasons for the bag. First, with it being grip seal, it'll help keep any moisture out. But secondly, uh, it's actually an anti-static bag, which kind of acts like a Faraday cage and protects, hopefully, the radio from any EMP, electric magnetic pulse, that might suddenly come, whether that's a nuke or a uh, solar flare. So it's kind of an added contingency to protect the radio. So this is a, a really useful item of kit. It's a very small, uh, normal radio, AM, FM, but this particular one doesn't use batteries. It's actually powered by hand crank system. So the unit itself covers normal FM, AM bands. You've got dials here for on, off and volume another dial here for tuning. On the top, you've got two switches. You can switch from FM band to AM band with this switch. 
and this one actually is a little torch. Um, robust little unit, plastic, rubberized plastic uh, outer casing with a normal telescopic antenna on it to pick up the radio signals. Um, so I'll take out the hand crank system just to show how that works and you'll see there's a little light at the bottom here and as I crank it confirms that it's actually getting power into the radio, the red light comes on. And it takes very little number of turns actually to be able to get it to work. So I'll switch it on. If you're not prepared to help, I'll do both. It might just take a little bit longer. Right, here goes. And there you go. Just turn that off. Uh, as I said, there's another switch on there, which is a little torch. Again, useful. You can actually plug earphones in if you want to in this socket, and you can plug in a DC charger, which will charge the battery if you can't be bothered to turn the hand crank, I guess. But in terms of uh, bug out equipment, survival equipment, if something does hit the fan, really useful piece of kit. You can use this to check the news, see what's happening, not just in your local area, but nationally and even internationally by just selecting the appropriate uh, news channel on there. So I thought I'd show you that as part of this communications gear review. Um, so once I've packed this away, we'll move on to the handheld two-way radio systems. So we've uh, cleared away the uh, normal radio receiver and we've turned attention to these two-way radios. Um, they're Baofeng BF888S transceivers, two-way radios, walkie-talkies, call them what you will. Um, they're a cheap radio, but they work extremely well. I have several of these. Uh, in this first box, you can see that I actually have two of those anti-static bags, inside of which are all of the component parts for two radio handsets. And I always keep them in those static bags and the only time they come out really is if there's a group of us larger than two or if I want to do my normal routine maintenance like I've been doing today and just topping up the batteries so that's that box these two boxes exact same radios uh, but they're not sealed in the anti-static bags they're actually ready to go so what I'll do is I'll take out one radio and assemble it so that you can see how it is when it's working. So I've just unpacked uh, this one box and laid out the components on the kitchen top just so that you can see all of the different bits that uh, you get when you buy one of these radios. Starting off with a desktop charger so you can recharge the batteries. There's the radio battery itself, the actual handset itself, the antenna, and then there's a few little bits of accessories. There's a, a lanyard, which I never use. There's a belt clip, which again, I never use. And one of the really good things about this radio is that this particular handset comes with a hands-free kit. So there's an earpiece there and a mic toggle switch there. So those are the components you get. Um, depending on what models you buy, some of them, you'll definitely get an instruction manual, but some of them come with this little USB, uh, it's a data transfer cable. There's a small CD that goes with this. If you want to do your own radio frequency programming, again, I don't do that. I just focus on the basics. Um, I always keep the radios separate, the, the battery not on the handset, stop it um, degrading over time and potentially damaging the contacts. So the, the battery only goes on when I'm going to use it or when I'm charging the unit. It's very simple. 
slides in there's a small clip on the bottom there that you just pull with your fingernail and then slide the battery into place antenna just screws on the top and you're good to go this particular radio does have uh, multiple channels on it which is great if you're in groups each group can be assigned a channel and if you want to have conversations rather than clogging up the main channel you can pop onto a different group have your conversation and then come back to the channel again um, you've got two buttons on the top one is an on off switch and a volume the other one is to change the channel on this side there's a small port with a rubberized uh, cover on it that is for the hands-free kit that just plugs in and i'll show you that in a minute uh, on the other side you've got your ptt switch your press to talk switch and then there's a couple of toggle switches one of them is uh, for a light which is on the top of the unit here the other one is the squelch or background noise uh, reducer um, so there we are it's a really basic handset but it is effective over quite a distance operation you use this top switch to turn the unit on a little voice comes and says that you've got power on and it tells you what channel on second switch is to change the channel it's just one click one channel so two channel two three three four and so on and so on and so on as i said there's two switches on the side here in orange bottom one is for a little led torch click it once you get a single light click it again you get a flashing emergency light click it again and it goes off second orange switch is the static or background noise so by turning the volume switch you can reduce the amount of background noise and then final switch the ptt switch press to talk switch when you press that to talk a red light comes on to tell you that you're transmitting send your message and then release light goes out similarly when you get a call coming into the unit as the call comes in that light will light up green and you'll hear obviously somebody calling you on on the radio so essentially that's it it's a very basic unit to recharge plug into the mains drop the battery in the charger if the battery is full which this is it'll be on green if it isn't full it'll be on red and then as it charges it'll go from red to green to say it's fully charged as i said earlier there is a hands-free kit with this it is very simple plug it into the socket on the side of the radio you can then pop your uh, radio into a pocket or if you want to use the belt clip and clip it onto a belt put it in your backpack whatever run out the cable there's a clip there to clip it to your collar so it's out of the way simply pop that into your ear and then use the toggle switch you can see it lighting up red on there as I depress the toggle switch to show that it's transmitting and that's it basic radio but effective radio and certainly two-way radios are something you are going to need when something hits the fan i'll just show very quickly a couple of uh, close-up shots of the uh, components that comprise the radio kit and front view of the radio followed by a top view of the radio showing the on off and volume switch or to the right next to that the channel selector switch and then you can see the uh, the torch lens at the bottom of the aerial there and then finally a side on view of probably the most important bit actually the ptt push to talk switch and the two orange toggle switches top one of which is the squelch or background noise reduction button and the bottom of one is the torch on off button just make up for the uh, not so great camera work there okay so we've taken a look around the radio and we've talked a little bit about how it works but it's worth pointing out 
that radios have some quite significant differences from communicating by telephone or mobile phone. So there's a few important things for you to consider whenever you're using two-way radios to communicate in an emergency situation. As soon as you start to transmit on a radio, you effectively block the channel and prevent anyone else from speaking or being heard. Unlike a telephone, a radio network does not allow simultaneous two-way conversation. So keep your finger off the PTT button unless you're actually speaking. Whenever you're using a radio, be brief and efficient. Know what it is that you're going to say before starting your conversation on the radio. This way you'll not tie up the channel while you're busy umming and eyeing thinking about what you want to say. Keep conversations short and allow breaks in case someone else needs to jump in on the channel with an emergency message. Radio communication can be prone to interference and background noise or weak signals, particularly during poor weather or when communicating over large distances. It's therefore important to speak more slowly and more clearly than you might do when you're using a telephone. This is one of the reasons why radio operators commonly use a formal voice procedure when using their radios, and they'll often spell out words using the phonetic alphabet. The radio also needs a bit of time to catch up with your speech. So when you press the PTT button for the first time, pause for a second before starting to speak. And again, when you're finished speaking, pause for a second or two before you release the PTT switch. Otherwise, people might miss your first and last few words. Repeat back critical points of a message that you receive to confirm that you heard the information correctly. It can also be useful to repeat short or similar sounding words that could easily be lost or distorted by the background noise or to emphasise something, for example, by saying yes, yes instead of just yes. You must be aware that radio conversations are not private. They can be heard by anyone else in your group who are on the same channel of the radio network and they can also be heard by others outside of your group who might accidentally be picking up your radio frequency on their radio. So be sure not to discuss sensitive information which you would not want others outside of your group to hear. Communication using radios is much easier and more efficient when everyone understands and uses similar language and etiquette, especially when there are more than two people using the channel. Radio operators therefore use a number of common words or phrases to help promote effective communication such as over, which means I've now finished speaking, it's your turn. Or say again, this means repeat your last message. You might have missed something or not heard it correctly. Stand by, which means I acknowledge your transmission, but I can't respond right now. So in other words, you heard what they said, you're a bit busy and you'll get back to them in a minute. Go ahead, which means, yep, I'm free to respond. Tell me what you want to tell me. Roger, that means that you've received the message and you've understood it. And finally, out, which means, yep, the conversation's finished now. Uh, we're not going to speak anymore. And the channel is now clear for other users. As I said a little bit earlier, radio operators will sometimes spell out words using something called the phonetic alphabet. Essentially all this is, is for each letter of the alphabet, a, a word will be assigned that starts with that letter. And you can see an example of this on the screen. This is internationally recognized. It's used extensively in the military and the other government services. And it's very useful whenever um, radio frequencies are distorted or the radio signal is very weak. There's a very old saying, practice makes perfect, and this applies pretty much to everything related to prepping. 
uh, so it also relates to radios. Having any item of equipment is no use to you unless you know how to use it and you properly maintain it in good working order. So you should take the time to practice with your radio, know what its realistic capabilities are and always keep it in a good state of repair with the batteries regularly checked and recharged. When you're working in groups, make sure that everyone makes proper use of the radio's capability to operate on different channels so that you don't all try to use the same channel all at the same time and clog it up with traffic. That's the whole point of having separate channels. There's one final and uh, important point on the subject of communications, particularly in respect of two-way radios, and that is that for many radios, you can only use them if you have a license. So when you're considering using two-way radios, uh, particularly these handheld uh, ones, if you're buying them off eBay or Amazon or wherever, is to make sure that you're buying a radio that you can actually use without having to go to government and get a license for it. Here in the UK, uh, licensing for radio communications is covered by the department called Ofcom and I'll drop a link to that in the uh, description box. But if you Google Ofcom uh, radio license, it will bring you up to the page. Um, when you're looking for handheld two-way radios, just check because the standard for radios of this type that do not require a license, the standard is called PMR446 or Personal Mobile Radio 446. So check what you're buying, make sure that it's, uh, somewhere it quotes that PMR446 on the box or ask the question of the person selling it to you, I'd hate for you to get into trouble. Um, that rule applies in pretty much every country in the world, but obviously each country does it in a different way and has a different department responsible for licensing. So if you're not in the UK, uh, just do an internet search and find out who does license radios and what kind of radios do or don't need a license. Well, that's it for this video. I hope that you found it to be informative. If you did like the video, then please do click on the like button. Similarly, feel free to hit the subscribe button so you can find your way back and be informed as and when new videos are uploaded. As always, do appreciate your comments. Uh, we will always take the time to read them and to reply if you've got any questions. Uh, but for now, that's it. And thanks for watching and look forward to seeing you again in the next video.